Okay. Hi, class. This is Mr. Sedicario. Um, welcome to your first flipped classroom. And by that I mean um, basically sometimes since we have, you know, I'm able to record lectures, instead of lecturing in class, I'm going to record a lecture and, and have that uh, for homework instead so we can work on stuff in class. I feel like that's a, maybe a better way to do things with, with technology. We can do it. So here we go, your first one. And the first lesson is um, I want to talk about what to look for in Lord of the Flies. So before you reread Lord of the Flies, before you turn to page one, I want you to listen to this. And um, these, this is just a set of ideas of what to look for in the story, what to be annotating in the text, what to be marking down. All right. So first, um, the how to mark a book. You know, the, the main things that you should be marking are these here. Piggy, Ralph, and Jack should get their own color highlighter. Um, significant objects, which we'll talk about on the next slide, but you know any objects that seem important, um, physical objects, I mean. Um, you should title your pages. Any, if there's a page, um, maybe the pages should be called Glasses Stolen. Um, but title, every now and again, you want to title your page if it's an important page. Um, Themes, we'll talk about that too, and essential questions. So all those things you should be looking for. Now, if you run out of colors, you can do different things like squiggly lines or whatever. And don't feel like you have to mark everything. Just be looking for all these kinds of things. And if you see something really important, uh, annotate. So what do I mean by objects? Objects are really symbols. And we'll talk about that later. But you should be looking for things like the shell, the conch shell, glasses, uh, their clothes, they're taking off clothes, notice that, the pig's head, fire, any biblical parallels, like if you see an object that might have some sort of biblical or Christian significance, and anything re relating to paradise. Themes include, obviously, good versus evil, the big theme of Lord of the Flies. Uh, there's the beast, the Lord of the Flies, the actually, like, in the story, um, Masks, like the idea of masks. I know they're, they don't, they're, may not wear a mask, but they may use things that act as masks. Um, the idea of civilization versus chaos. So sometimes they act civilized, sometimes there's chaos. Look for those contrasts. Um, any sacred places. And then, of course, our favorite core theme of the course, as I said, maps. Essential questions include... What are, you know, these are the essential questions of the class. So you can just go back to them, right? They're, what are the maps or models we've created? Where do they come from? So where do the, do the kids on the island have any sort of models of how they see the world? How do these models encourage or inhibit growth? How do they affect our perception and action? And how do they change, right? And, oh, this is uh, Golding himself, the author. Um, a little background about Golding. He was. Um, you should just know some, just a few things about him, so that it may help you understand the story or see it in a new light. And um, so, basically, his, the short of it is, he was born in England. He was a genius. He started writing at the age of seven, allegedly, and he actually became an English teacher. Good job. And uh, then he went on to World War II. He fought um, in World War II. He was a naval officer, or, or he worked in the Navy, but he would actually made it up through the ranks really quickly because he was such, such a genius. And um, when he got back from World War II, wrote uh, a lot of stuff. And uh, Lord of the Flies was his first novel, and it was a huge success. And he's written a lot of different things, but they all, all of his stories deal with the same issues, mainly good versus evil. And he never picks out a group like, you know, an animal farm, there's the communists. But instead, he just makes a claim, usually, that kind of anyone can be evil. And so that's always interesting. <laughs> that's Golding. And related to the idea of being evil, something to think about is human nature. What is Golding saying about human nature? And what is in our nature? What is he saying about what's in our nature? What are our instincts? What is the true, what is the brain truly wired to do? And relate to that, are we evil? Is there something about us that is inherently evil? 
as, as human beings? Are we doomed? Are we destined for self-destruction? Some things like that. And yes, you will eventually have to debate this issue, um, maybe just on your own, but um, you should be creating an argument or looking for answers. And the last piece I want to leave you with is the idea of Maslow's hierarchy. Um, this is uh, sort of a, um, a concept that Maslow created that um, I won't go into too much into detail. Basically, is this concept was created to, to state that basically human beings have five needs, five basic needs, and they go in order. So at the bottom, as you can see, there's the physiological need, which if you look at, uh, you know, process out here, you notice there's the physical and physiological, and and yes, that's those are the main needs. Like as human beings, his argument at least is that we first and foremost need physical needs like uh, sleep, food, and and yes, I know as a teacher, I, this is tough to say, but sex too. And um, so physical needs have to be met first. And when you have those physical needs needs met, you can then move on to the next level, which is safety. Um, as a human being, we need to know. Okay, next next thing is: Are we safe? Are we? Uh, can we survive? Can we, you know, move on? Um, and then there's love, companionship, and then esteem and self-actualization are sort of higher level, or sometimes we call it higher order uh, ways of being. Um, and we can't get to them without the other levels met. And another way of saying those: If you don't like esteem and self-actualization. Um, these are a couple other ways of putting it. Right? The, the respect, you need respect amongst your, your peers, your community, and then the ability to push yourself. So when all your needs are met, there's you can you can go beyond those other needs. Look for that in the story. And my final thought is that um, I'll just leave you with the fact that be aware that this book can contain some really tough issues and um, if you really wrestle with them you are going to find you're actually going to be able to coerce some answers out of some of these big questions like what does it mean to be human and are we good or evil and how do we survive in this world so um, I wish you luck and enjoy the story